Perfect. Welcome back geographers. We are back and we are thinking geographically. So welcome to HPHG with me, Miss V. All right, so before, just a quick review, we talked about um, different types of maps. We, I introduced you to maps. And in our second topic, we talked about the five themes of geography using the Sims. All time favorite game, I'm just saying. Um, so now we're going to talk more about spatial concepts and you're probably like spatial. What, what is that? We're talking about space now. We're like, we're going into space. No, we're not, de we're not doing with that per se. We're talking about space on the earth, but I'll talk more about that in a minute. So let's get started. All right. So where are we going today? Of course, as always, I am going to direct you to the guided notes. These notes are so important for you to have because you can use them to reference back to when you are studying for your tests or your quizzes and especially for your AP exam because all of the information that I talk in these lecture videos are the information, all of it is going to be in your exam so the more that you're able to review that information and go into it the better okay so first things first that's our overview right and i'm going to talk more about the lesson for today and then we're going to talk more about asking the why of where okay as geographers that's what we ask the why of where so you're probably like what i don't get it don't worry you will okay then we're going to talk a little bit more about how space affects our interactions. How does space affect our interactions as human beings on this planet? We're going to talk about that. Then we're going to wrap it up in a nice pretty bow and give you the lowdown on the whole thing. All right. So, all right. The why of where. <laughs> The why of where. This is what geographers pretty much ask, especially human geographers, when we're talking about the entire concept of this course. The why of where. Why things are situated on Earth the way they are. Why is it that the pyramids are in Egypt? Why are the pyramids in Egypt and there are pyramids in Mexico and South America? What were the pyramids for? What were they used for? Why are they situated there and not on in North the North Pole or in the South Pole? Right? So asking those questions helps us to gain understanding about human interactions on the planet and how we interact with the earth and how we interact with each other as well. And that's pretty much what we're gonna be doing in this course. Okay. All right, so spatial concepts. So spatial in this case means relating to or occupying space. So in this particular lesson, we're gonna talk a lot about our different ways of an assess, about how we assess why things are on the earth the way they are, how they're on the earth and where they're actually at. But first we gotta look at where they're at, how they got there, and then we ask the question about well, why is it there in the first place, right? So that's spatial concepts, basically using those concepts to understand and assess the why of where, <laughs> right? Why things are the way they are on the, on the planet. All right. So the first thing we're going to look at, if you remember your five themes of geography, the first one we're going to look at is location. We use this to find places on the earth. We have, we have to know where we're going, right? So let's look at that. So the first concept, and if you remember your five things of geography, is absolute location. 
absolute location is basically the exact precise measurement of where something is located on the global grid or on a globe or on the planet, right? And we use different intersections of that grid to determine where things are, land masses are on the planet, right? So one of those me units of measurement is called lines of latitude, right? And or parallels, you may know them as parallel lines or parallels and they are measured in degrees from north to south. Okay, so as you see here, this is 75 degrees north, and it goes all the way down to the equator, right, which is zero degrees, and then we have south that goes all the way down to 75 degrees south, right, north to south, okay? Then you have lines of longitude, which are also called meridians, and those are measured from east to west, right, from the prime meridian. The prime meridian is right here. Okay, the zero the green line, and these are your lines of longitude, okay? And those are measured from east to west, okay? So you would say, um, you know, zero degrees, uh, zero degrees, 15 degrees west, 30 degrees west, 45 degrees west, and so on and so on, okay? And then the same thing for east. All right. So... We have absolute location that, and remember absolute location is the exact precise location based on the global grid, right? Then we have relative location. Relative location is basically um, location based on what's around you or what's surrounding that place or that location area. So we may say that the beach, is, as you see in this example, the beach is 30 miles west of the city. We can say that Osceola High School is six miles away from Gateway High School because we're using relative location. We're given a relative idea based on the things that surround our location, right? Relative location, using the things, our relationship, or using different modes of measurement, distance measurement to describe where certain things are located all right all right so next thing that we use to um, assess the next concept that we use to assess where things are on the planet or in the earth is site and situation okay and this is something that we use to relate to a location so let's get into site so site is refers to the place a uh, places internal physical characteristics so this is very precise when we talk about site you can if you have the exact coordinates of a particular site or a particular place and you put those into a GPS it's going to give you the actual site of that place right so let's for example let's say that you had the particular coordinates for Kissimmee Florida then you'll be able to find the site of Kissimmee, Florida. If you had the coordinates for the World Trade Center in New York and you put in those precise coordinates for the World Trade Center in New York, you will get the site of the World Trade Center. Okay? Same thing. If you wanted to put the coordinates for Mount Rushmore, right, and you had those exact coordinates, you can put in the coordinates in your GPS and it will give you the site of Mount Rushmore. So that's particularly what site means, okay? Referring to the physical characteristics such as terrain, mountains, exact locations, okay? Now, situation refers to the context of the cultural characteristics surrounding that area, that location. So in this case, it may be, it may incorporate physical features, but it's more attuned to the cultural aspects of that particular location so you're looking at different things so maybe it may be regional so if we're saying that we're looking for where you know the cowboys where where do the the dallas cowboys play <laughs> right or um if we're talking about you know um physical or architectural um, buildings and so forth, like the Eiffel Tower, right? Um, we know that the Eiffel Tower 
its situation is in a certain place in Paris, France, right? So we know we can find those cultural characteristics that surround the area and refers to that particular equation based on how we as humans have created things by that area, okay? So site is very specific, it's very exact, and situation deals with the context of how we as humans interacted with that area and built things and created things and used its food and we created uh, culture and so forth in that area, all right? So place. <laughs> So, of course, we talked about location, right? We have to come to place. This is how we describe a certain site or a certain location, right? This is the description that we give it. So, place refers to all of the human and physical attributes in a location, right? So, all of the human characteristics that we talked about when we talked about site and situation, those refer to the place right that's a place a place is new york city <laughs> a place is kissimmee florida a place is miami a place is you know cairo <laughs> right a place is the giza uh, the giza pyramids those are places because they have human and physical characteristics to it site and situation okay now all places sites and situations, all places usually have a certain name or what we call a toponym. And a toponym is the general name given for that geographical place or that site, that situation, right? In this case, this is a place called Aberswin... So I'm not trying to say that. Mm -mm. You try to say that. Y'all, you say that five times fast. I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not doing it. I'm not, I'm, mm -mm. I'm not about to do that. Aberswin, Abers but anyway, you get it, <laughs> right? So it's mouth of the river. Swing it, yes, swing it. Y'all correct me, I don't know, I'm not. I'm good in, in Caribbean Creole. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm not, that's not my, I'm, I'm not Welsh, so, you know, correct me how, tell me how to say it. <laughs> hey, okay. <laughs> um, so that's a toponym because they give it a name based on the physical features of that particular place, right? So here's a did you know. Did you know that this is an actual name of a place? <laughs> now, if I can't get to say that one, who's told you I'm gonna say this one? I ain't saying this one here. I mean, if you can say this one, you know, have at it. Maybe I could give you a link and you could try to figure out how to say this particular place. I'm not trying to say it, but you see what it means here. It's actual meaning based on the physical and cultural situation and site of that area, right? It's Welsh part of Wales, United Kingdom. You try it. I'm not. <laughs> All right. So I'll be back with more info on part two of spatial concepts. Where we'll discuss concepts that influence the way we interact with each other. Take this time to go back and review your notes and make sure you understand these concepts before moving on to part two.